So guys, we're back for another episode of the Full-Time Network Marketer and uh, today with another seven-figure earner from uh, the Middle Eastern region. Uh, again, a very good friend of mine, uh, Dr. Islam Wasfi. Glad to have you. I'm so happy to be with you today, Fabi. I know you have an amazing story and um, I hope, I know that we get a lot of information out of you today, a lot of golden nuggets because what you have built is second to none. But uh, let's start a little bit like who you are. Uh, really, Fabian, uh, we are friends. So yeah, I will tell you who I am. It's just for the interview. <laughs> 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 but uh, actually, really, I love you, man. And I'm so happy. And uh, it's my pleasure to be with you today. Uh, I am uh, Egyptian. Okay, I'm uh, graduated from a faculty of uh, pharmacy, Cairo University. I was working like a pharmacist for like three years and um, I joined network marketing 10 years ago. I worked one year like a pharmacy at the morning uh, in my pharmacy like a pharmacist mm -hmm. and at night uh, network marketing. You had your own pharmacy? Yeah, um, I was renting a pharmacy mm -hmm. in Egypt, okay. Um, and I was uh, working uh, very hard inside my career and I was going uh, very strong. But when I listened about uh, network marketing, you know, everything changed. <laughs> What's super interesting, um, just to, to quickly recap. So you have a PhD, you are a doctor. So you went from university, you started working as a pharmacist. Ah, and by the way, for all our listeners, you recently learned English. It's not so long ago. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like I learned English during the last two years. Two years, yeah, yeah. which is amazing yeah, that I, we can I, do. I had the basics, but actually I yeah. learned like the last two years. So my English is not the best. <laughs> no, but we can understand you very, very well. <laughs> yeah, and uh, it's always funny because we are all not from the United States, from the UK here yeah. in this interview, because the idea is to give a an impression to listeners worldwide what network marketing is about, right? Yeah, that's what that's what we love. Yeah. How did you get approached on network marketing? Uh, really, um, a friend of mine, okay, uh, he is um, not famous guy at all. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> he's the best networker ever. Uh, really, uh, he's the Dr. Islam Muhammad, uh, for sure. He's our best friend, okay? Uh, he was um, uh, enrolled already in network marketing and he explained to me and showed me the plan, uh, let's join me in network marketing. But really, you know, it was not my first time. Uh, like two, three times before I had a presentation for network marketing and really I refused to join mm -hmm. network marketing. I didn't agree with the idea. You know, 10 years ago, it was not easy to believe that you can make a lot of money from the internet and you can change people's life. I was thinking they are exaggerating, I, you know. I, I, I didn't believe at the beginning. But, uh, you know, uh, when I started to see some people uh, successful and making money and uh, when I started to see gross happening in network marketing, at that time, I decided to listen. Mm -hmm. But listen with open-minded mentality, hmm. not like rigid mentality. So you were approached a few times before from the wrong people, or would you say it was the wrong company or just the wrong timing? Um, really, it was the same company mm -hmm. at the four times, okay? Uh, people, I'm not talking about the wrong people. Uh, maybe they were not the best, okay? Because of they are not here now, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and uh, uh, but maybe maybe the main reason already I started to open my mind. Maybe if one guy of uh, those guys uh, he made like follow up for me, maybe at the second time mm -hmm. I was uh, open minded to join him. I'm asking for a reason because I had the same situation. I was also a business owner like you, and in my case. Nobody talked to me because everybody thought, oh, Fabian is successful, like he has a business, he doesn't need that. In your case, people talk to you, but they talk to you at the wrong time or they didn't follow up enough. And that's a clear message to all those people out there. Yes. Don't stop following up. Don't, don't decide for other people, right? 
And really, uh, even Dr. Islam Muhammad, when he already uh, made a presentation for me, I told him, man, forget it. I will never join this uh, industry. And I was focused on the pharmacy career and I was planning to be uh, uh, the best pharmacist ever. <laughs> <laughs> I was planning to have uh, branches of uh, pharmacies all over the planet. So uh, network marketing was not my plan. But you know, after like, um exactly like seven weeks okay i saw him working hard i saw him uh committed in the, the trainings and after that and i saw him uh, he made his uh, his first check inside network marketing so you know i i, I started to see to think like maybe it's true <laughs> <laughs> because uh, and and my second message is for people okay uh, sometimes the, the prospects they are waiting us to see what will happen first at mm -hmm. the beginning you know they are mocking after that uh, they are looking uh, from afar and then they join us when they see our commitment and uh, um, our continuity mm -hmm. So you started with your first company back then, but as I know, there was a lot of uh, adventure <laughs> afterwards. So for how long did you work with your first company? It was uh, two years and eight months. Mm -hmm. Exactly, two years, eight months. H how successful uh, have you been in this first company? Uh, it was great experience, by mm -hmm. the way. I uh, I love uh, my old company, okay? It's uh, successful till now. And actually, uh, um, I learned a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, first uh, company in network marketing is like your first love. <laughs> True. <laughs> it's unforgettable. <laughs> yeah. I always like to say it's like a virus. When you have it once, yeah. you have to go back yeah. one day, right? <laughs> you know, uh, I love this, uh, this company too much. I learned a lot inside this company. Two years and eight months, I built a team with 8,000 people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a very, very great achievement. But of course, it's nothing to what happened later. Yeah. But we will get to that. We'll get to that. You, you know, uh, when I joined the uh, network marketing at my first month, okay, I enrolled 36 people in mm -hmm. my first month. Okay. You know why I enrolled 36 people in my first month? Because I don't know what is the benchmark, how much people, how many people uh, should I enroll? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Okay. Uh, they told me bring people, okay, recruit. <laughs> yeah, they told me recruit. Okay, and this company was focused mainly on the recruiting more mm -hmm. than the products and that stuff. Okay, mm -hmm. they told me uh, go and recruit. I don't know how many people should I recruit. I recruited thirty six people. You know, uh, um, when I recruited, the, they told me uh, uh, um, share the business for mm -hmm. two prospects per day. Mm -hmm. I showed for sixty people. They joined with me like Series 6. Mm. But you know, for your first month to make a Series 6 uh, direct uh, signups, for me, it was very motivating mm. for me. Very motivating. I started to think, oh, I took the best decision. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> how, how, how did they grow like the 36 people? They all did. <laughs> 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 no, not all, but uh, almost all. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, I had no experience. The, the, uh, uh, honestly, the Series 6, they didn't join me because I was the greatest networker ever. No, they joined me because they trusted me uh, yeah. personally, okay, and mentality-wise and business-wise, but not I, I, I had no experience. Mm. I, I think it was by luck, okay? But it's it, it gives me the power. Uh, to work with others, the self-confidence, the belief in network marketing. And actually, you know what happened? Uh, my appliances and the leadership, okay, they started to tell me, Islam, you did something great. You did something great. You are super successful. You are super recruiter. You are. You did a record uh, for recruiting 36 people inside your first months. And they were uh, uh, giving me the opportunity to share in the trainings, my testimony. And hey, guys, we have today one of the best recruiters ever. And they give me a lot of super edification. You know, uh, second months, how many people I recruited? Zero. Zero? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Third month. I did things. Like the one. Same. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I, I thought that I did something great. Yeah. So, Series 6 is a lot of people. Yeah. 
so okay it's for um, some people they are recruiting 36 in like six months okay so i will not recruit for four five yeah. months <laughs> I, actually it's super funny because i don't know if i ever told you but in my first month uh, i enrolled 90 people and uh, but what i did is because there's always the story behind the story right yeah so what i did is um i had a database of four thousand people in my gym and half of them had no job they were unemployed so me and two friends we called two thousand people we invited wow. them for a meeting wow. 200 showed up 90 enrolled second month same thing with you i enrolled zero and i had no duplication because only me and my wife were working. Exactly. <laughs> and and exactly. same thing as you just said, I didn't know how to do it. I was good in one thing, recruiting, but the rest, no idea how to help them, right? Exactly, and you know, uh, uh, really also, uh, when I made the, uh, like a fast, uh, 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 fast results, you know, I felt something like I become a full cup mm. and uh, I felt like ego. At the beginning, okay. explain the the full cup because most yeah. people have never heard about it. I yeah. like the concept. You know the full cup. Uh, uh, we have in our culture a concept called uh, you need to empty your cup to be successful. Okay, empty your cup is like this cup, for mm -hmm. example. Okay, if uh, it's uh, enough water, you cannot pour more. Okay, mm -hmm. but if this cup is empty, you can add a lot and a mm -hmm. lot and a lot, okay? So we need to empty our cup mm -hmm. to uh, uh, have the opportunity to study, to learn, to take experience, to watch others and to listen, okay? Uh, maybe because I did fast results, it didn't help me because I started to think, oh, okay, I know everything. Mm -hmm. I'm the best, <laughs> yeah, okay. And because of that, I lost all my team and I went like uh, two months uh, making zeros. I didn't make any money, okay. Really, I, I, I'm I grateful for this period of time because already I learned network marketing during those two months, mm -hmm. not my first months, the other two months. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so just to um, quickly, explain how I understood it, correct me if I'm wrong. So you say like the, the concept of the empty cup basically means forget what you know, yeah. uh, be open to, to get new information in. Because be like a kid. <laughs> perfect. Best, best, <laughs> best way to say it. Yeah. So you did that for two years and eight months and what happened then? Uh, really nothing happened, okay. Um, I saw there is no development uh, inside um, my first company, okay. Uh, the training organization were very strong, okay? And actually, um, um, the leadership was great, but the problem was the development, okay? And I do believe that if you are not growing, you will be uh, nothing one day, mm -hmm. okay? And actually, I started to see what can I do or what's the next step, Maybe it was not the best decision, okay? But I took this decision. Me and Dr. Islam Muhammad, we took the decision to open network marketing company. Mm -hmm. Already we opened a network marketing company in 2013. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I uh, opened this company. All my people joined me. Mm -hmm. And that gave me, uh, gave me a great lesson in network marketing. This business, people join people. People mm -hmm. not join companies, and it's it's all about people. And if you are supportive enough, everyone will follow you. Mm -hmm. People are following. People are not following really the great leaders or the most successful networkers. They are following the most supportive networkers. Mm -hmm. So it's all about relationship. It's all about relationship and support because mm -hmm. you know relationship gives the love. Mm -hmm. They will love you, but support give the respect mm -hmm. they will respect you That's you know it. that uh, phrase pretty sure um they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care yeah yeah, yeah, yeah sure so sure. it's all about like helping your people to succeed and if they feel in good hands yeah sometimes they, I'm, I'm i'm giving advices to my people okay uh, it's not about uh, your achievements it's not about your rank it's not about your car it, it's all great and it's important but actually people will follow you because you are supportive, not mm -hmm. because you are great. So you open your own company, like you and your uh, partner yeah. in crime, yeah. which I will have soon at the podcast yeah. as well. <laughs> uh, you guys are very close friends. And um, 
maybe one day we even do a podcast with the three of us because uh, I like how you guys are interacting with each other because <laughs> yeah. you're so different in personalities. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know each other from the university, actually, back yes, then, right? Yes, we were together mm -hmm. at the faculty. We were colleagues, yeah, at, mm -hmm. the, at the faculty. And you were sitting next to each other because you had, how was it, yeah. like the number was yeah, forced uh, you his, to his be? Number, <laughs> his number was 137 and my number was 138. We mm -hmm. were together everywhere, okay, going together, uh, taking uh, uh, lectures together. Mm -hmm. and at the sections together <laughs> everywhere what what a, what a crazy story like you meet to become a pharmacist you start network marketing then you build your own company yes and uh, we took all our uh, pharmacy pharmacist friends and <laughs> <laughs> i know it's so funny like your whole organization like everybody who has like the highest rank they're yeah. all doctors <laughs> yeah doctors pharmacists <laughs> dentists yeah. yeah everybody has a phd in yeah. something and like your whole organization thinks oh we cannot make it because i don't have a phd <laughs> i cannot be successful in network marketing <laughs> you know but actually uh, let me be uh, honest with you okay in egypt okay even if you are a pharmacist you are a doctor you are a uh, um, minister, <laughs> yeah, okay. Anyway, you uh, you are not uh, making a lot of money, mm -hmm. okay. So network marketing, something different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. True. Yeah, we just had a conversation because uh, you also uh, moved for to Dubai for a while because you have a big summit coming up. So you decided, hey, let's stay here for like two three months to prepare everything. Yeah. And uh, you just told me today, you said like, man, Dubai is expensive if yeah. you uh, if you have family here. Yeah. Because Egypt is, is so economic. You know? Yeah, it, it's something like Dubai here is 10 times mm. yeah, what, what I'm spending No, not, in not that you couldn't afford it. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm talking about the normal people here in Dubai. It's, yeah. uh, you know, uh, it will be hard mm. for them. Because, but honestly, for me, actually here it's a lot of services, yeah. malls, and it's attractive to spend. Mm. <laughs> okay, so for for yeah, for, for me as a German, I look at Dubai and I see the costs. But at the end, it's almost the same like in Germany because yeah. we, here we have no tax, and Germany yeah. have to pay the tax. But uh, yeah, as you just said, like Egypt is much more economic and. Uh, living in Egypt is super cheap in comparison, obviously. So sure. a doctor Europe, doesn't need to make so much money like anywhere else in the world. Right? Yeah, Europe also is uh, is expensive. Yeah. In comparison to uh, uh, Egypt, for example, well, in, <laughs> in my country, everything is cheap. You know, um, I'm looking like I'm making promoting for my country, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like for tourism. <laughs> you know, uh, everything is cheap, but you know, in, in in network marketing, it's a different benchmark, okay? For networkers, they love to live their life different and they have high lifestyle, mm. okay? So, uh, you know, I'm uh, that's what I, I, I will think about, okay? If I'm working now as a pharmacist, I would make money, but I was living i'm sure a different style and different mm. life and different mindset. i mean starting with you have to open your pharmacy every morning you know you have to be there even if you have a chain you have to make sure that you visit all of them you cannot just be whatever fly to dubai and stay three months to prepare a summit that's that would be impossible 100 uh. percent. and actually it's uh, not only making uh, not only making a uh, few uh, little money but actually it's also about having challenges it, at the pharmacy, I was facing a lot of uh, challenges, mm. challenges with the employees, the challenges with the uh, financial situation, challenges with the pharmaceutical companies, uh, challenges with the patients. <laughs> it's all challenges and not making a lot of income. Uh, yeah, that's, that's I, what the I honestly think we have the best best business in the world. I mean, both of us, we have that normal business background and we can tell, you know. Sure. It is just better, you know. Sure, sure, sure. And and it's not about uh, pharmacy. It's not about the gym. It's about, you know, every single small business and big business. Mm. It has a, its own challenges. Mm. And, and but network marketing, you get paid mm. for the challenges. And now it becomes very interesting because you opened your own company and you became tremendously successful. Your company was the largest company in all over the Middle East. Exactly. I had like 2,700,000 thousands of people inside <laughs> my country <laughs> inside my company it's, so before uh, just to um like a little uh a recap so before you said like oh we built like eight thousand people in two and a half years oh, yeah. and then i said hey that's amazing but i knew what was coming <laughs> so i said yeah but how does it look uh, today and 
I mean, 2.7 million people in your uh, in, in your company. Yeah. Amazing. And I remember I've seen those old videos from your organization where you filled the stadiums. And uh, amazing. Like, I've never seen that before. It's uh, for sure a cultural thing. Let's talk about uh, – because I, I was – I was able to be part of one of your large events. I was invited once to be there, which was amazing. But let's get to that a little bit later. So you were very, very successful as an owner, but now you decided to be a distributor again. Why? Look, Fabian, uh, it was a turning point, okay? Uh, my first uh, event outside my country was GoPro Recruiting uh, Mastery, mm -hmm. okay, uh, in Vegas, okay? And uh, really, I saw a different view of network marketing, okay? You know, my uh, old people and everyone, it, uh, they were inside Egypt, okay? They were like um, uh, working with the same way, with the same culture. But, you know, I saw something different in network marketing. I want to make an international platform. Mm. I want to make, I want to go global. I want to be uh, ranked. I want to have my organization number one all over the planet. You know, uh, uh, um, why I decided to be a distributor? Because I realized that for my company, I need like 10 years to develop and develop and develop and I need a lot of money and funds and um, uh, experts and everything to be great. Mm. So I think it was a great idea to be part of a great uh, company. Mm. Yeah, okay. It's better than taking like 10 years to grow up so you can do it very fast. Mm. But it depends on how much ego do you yeah. have. Because some people, they say, hey, I'm a company owner. No, I have the ego to be a distributor and let uh, someone control my decisions and put the chart for me. Okay, for us, it was different. And for it doesn't it depend was, on you anymore because it doesn't matter how big your vision is. I mean, I know that you are a tremendous visionary, but then you need the right people, uh, like the executives, like the, uh, the managers. And I think if you want to grow, just my experience of the last almost eight years in network marketing full time is that at each stage, you actually need different people because some people are good in the beginning, but they cannot grow with you because they, they don't have the experience. So you would need to change them, but where to find the greatest people f to work for you. And there you're back to the challenges. Same thing like owning a pharmacy, you know? Yeah. You are, you are talking about the corporate people. Yeah. Yes. You know, um, it's not easy, especially network marketing. To, to, to open a network marketing uh, company, it's not easy. Yeah, it's mm. not my advice to everyone. Okay, don't do it. <laughs> If you are saying <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> okay, it's not the best experience. Because, you know, uh, um, it's difficult. Especially when you are a networker. Because you will have like two hearts. Heart with the team and heart with the company. Mm. Okay, at the like board meetings, you will be at the side of the company and try to how make the company make the best profit ever. Mm. Actually, it's a business. Okay, and when you go to the distributors, okay, you are applying. You are a leader, so yeah. you want your distributors to be the best. Okay, mm. so you know it's 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 a kind of schizophrenia. <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy. I think that's a very important topic because almost every network marketer has faced that question once. So you start building and then you talk to a business owner and you want to recruit that business owner. And some business owners, they come with that argument, why don't you open your own company? You would make much more money, yeah. right? <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. So, but you say clearly it's a lot of hassle, it's a lot of uh, challenges. Just be a distributor. It's so much more fun, right? Exactly. You know, I took uh, the decision to open a network marketing company when uh, I was a teenager. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When I realized that, I, I, I asked myself, what did I do? Okay. It's a huge responsibility. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, even for the best companies and the best uh, businessmen, it's not easy. And mm -hmm. it's a huge responsibility. And how come I'm doing both together? working uh, in the field and working mm -hmm. uh, in network marketing and doing events and doing uh, the managerial stuff is very difficult. What, what was your best income per year as a distributor? Uh, for me? Mm -hmm. 
I got recognized as a million dollar earner after one year uh, in my last uh, network marketing company. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, last year, I did the second year. I did like two point six million. Yeah. Now imagine, could you do two point six million profit with the pharmacy? No, I <laughs> was. Uh, I think my uh, grandson. Uh, me and my son and my grandson. Okay, our total income from pharmacy it went not. <laughs> 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 and and that's the point. What I always try to explain business owners that we have a cash rich business. You know, we have a business. And here's a great example. A friend of mine. Um, you might also know him. He's from Italy. He's an investor, and um, he's very successful. He makes multiple seven figures a year with investments. Yeah. And he also is an Emerald Director in uh, like uh, our company that yeah. is, let's say, around like $25,000, $30,000 he's making. So on once I asked him, I said, listen, why are you doing network marketing? I mean, it's great, $25,000, $30,000, but what drives you? You don't need that extra money, right? And he said, because it was the best investment I've ever done. I was like, how come? And he says, listen, do you know how much I need to invest to make $10,000 each month? I said, no idea. What's the return on invest? And he says, let's say 5%. 5% is safe, 5 to 8%, but let's let's calculate with 5. So I said, okay, how much? He said, I'll tell you, 2.4 million. So I need to put $2.4 million in assets that I get 10,000 out each month. Wow. And that's the normal way if you want to make passive income. And then when my wife once came and uh, she introduced me to network marketing, I've seen the potential because I have a huge network I never touched. So after seven months, because they had obviously the network for it, but after seven months, he said, we made the first time $10,000. And since then, we never made less. But you know what's the best? I said, what? And he says, I still have the 2.4 million. (laughs) <laughs> you know, and and that's and that that changed yeah. my mind completely regarding business owners, investors, and big thinkers, because we really have something what everybody wants: cash flow. You know, yeah, it's a hundred percent cash flow. You know, Fabian, uh, I decided after one year network marketing to stop working as a pharmacist to close mm-hmm. my pharmacy. Okay, uh, it was a turning point because I realized that one hour in network marketing, okay. Uh, uh, the return of one hour in network marketing is more than the return of 100 hour working as a pharmacist. Mm. And it was my first year in network marketing. Imagine the second and third and tenth year. You know, uh, uh, the idea of the leverage of time, it was the greatest idea that I love in network marketing. For example, if I'm working as a pharmacist, like... Uh, um, normal pharmacist and take like 10 years and after 10 years i will be the manager of the pharmacy and another 10 years i will be the manager of the hospital Mm. and another 10 year i will be the biggest one in my country for example and at that time i'm gonna achieve my dreams and make something great i took like 30 years 30 years 30 Mm. years it's not, uh, we're not talking about three years, it's 30 years. If mm. I'm working like average 2,000 hours per year, in the 30 years, I'm talking about 60,000 hours. Mm. 60,000 hours. If I'm working in network marketing and I have after like not one year, two years, after three years, after three years, I have 6,000 people. Inside the whole month, each one of the 6,000 people, he worked like 10 hours, in one month, I'm, I did the 30 years of working as a pharmacist. Mm. That's the greatest idea of, uh, of network marketing. It's not you walking 1,000 steps. It's uh, 1,000 people, every, each one of them working one step. It's yeah. a great example. And I know you're very much into history because <laughs> yeah. uh, I always read your posts with a translation. Because yeah. yeah. you write <laughs> in Arabic. Because yeah. you are the only not Arabic speaking guy reading my posts. <laughs> yeah. no, I, lo- I love them because you're <laughs> very you. well educated in history <laughs> and you, you always Allah. bring examples uh, Trying. To, uh, <laughs> um, to, to, to give a message. And um, let me quickly wrap up what we already talked about. And then I would like to go a little bit into training and learning because I want to pick your brain a bit because I know that uh, you have some very interesting uh, topics. So um, 
you were the owner. Um, after a few years, you decided, hey, we have 2.7 million people, but let's become distributors again. So you, you made a whole cut. You kind of started, obviously not from scratch because you had a huge following. Yeah. Started with a new company as a distributor, became the number one again in like all over Middle East. Then you even signed up more company owners. <laughs> Yeah, even the competitors in my country, they mm -hmm. joined us. And uh, uh, I'm not talking about networkers. I'm talking about company owners, okay? Yeah. Because I, I did the same. Mm -hmm. I was company owner and I took the decision to be a distributor. So they already did the same mm -hmm. because they saw a successful testimony. Mm -hmm. That's it. It's super interesting as well, even though if you just say it or explain it how it happened but there's a very important learning um, never underestimate your own story because people like people who are like you right exactly and if you have gone that way they will ask hey why why did he do that like there must be a reason and you just tell your story and they realized hey it makes totally sense let's join forces you know yeah yeah and, and, and now you literally have the um, like the strongest team in the region. It's spreading out even to Africa right now, spreading out to Europe, and you have tremendous leadership. And that's something I want to uh, dig in a little bit with you today because we had that amazing discussion once uh, when we talked about teams. And um, without mentioning team names, yeah. so basically my question to you once was, because I really like how you guys did it, every organization at one point When you, when you get larger, you reach that, that moment when people want to split from the main organization. They're saying, hey, I want to have my own team. So, And you handled that amazingly. Can you explain that a little bit, how it all happened? Yes. Uh, okay. Look, look, Fabian, we have an organization. Okay, I will not uh, mm -hmm. mention the names. Uh, in our organization, it's a lot of teams inside the organization. Okay, Each one of uh, the leaders, he has his own team. Okay. Mm -hmm. To launch your team, it's a criteria, okay? To be uh, to launch a team, you need to be a team leader and you have assistance for the for your team and you need the criteria like uh, making average income like X Y Z, uh, making uh, an event uh, with attendees like X Y mm -hmm. Z, uh, have a great attitude because it's a kind of recommendation because you know the team leader he he's gonna be an example for mm -hmm. others, okay? So we cannot edify or recognize a guy he is not deserving to be mm -hmm. recognized okay let, let, let's go back a step so for those people who cannot follow us yet so let's say your organization let's give it a name let's give it a letter k okay the k <laughs> organization <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay so the k organization is or well, used to be your team in the beginning yeah. right so you build that team the k organization And then you had certain leaders who said, hey, I want to bring my own culture in because I have, whatever, a hustle culture. And the next one says, oh, yeah, but my culture is more about relationship and meetings. And so... No, I'm, go I'm, I'm going to tell you something. Mm -hmm. Okay, it, it, di it didn't work like that. At the beginning, when we found the organization is going big, okay, and we felt that some leaders, uh, they think that, okay, I need to have my own identity. Identity, I, okay. uh, Yeah, mm -hmm. I need to have my own uh, team, okay? Uh, why I'm a part in uh, of this uh, team, okay? And why not I'm not a team leader, okay? We are humans, okay? okay? It's, and it's normal, okay? So we decided to make like a launch for teams inside the mm -hmm. organization and we changed the name of the K team okay to a K organization okay yeah. and to bring uh, uh, to make uh, teams okay mm -hmm. so we promoted a target for everyone mm -hmm. if you achieve uh, if you will achieve this uh, target you will launch your own team mm -hmm. and we will support you for your own team we will come to your event we will launch officially we will promote that like crazy we will make official approval everywhere about your team and your team will be under the umbrella of the big team mm -hmm. of the big organization okay so it was uh, you know uh, um, credibility for the team Mm -hmm. And everyone loved that, and everyone got his ownership for his team, and everyone had the gratitude for uh, the gratitude for the organization, and uh, it was a competition between people to launch their teams, and 
why not? Sometimes we don't uh, like uh, some ideas. Mm-hmm. And why not to do it with a smart way? Mm-hmm. That's it. And uh, do all those people work the same way or do they work no. differently? Each each one, you know, uh, they are like uh, 95, let's say 97%, they are working at the same way under the same umbrella. But like 3%, each each team, you know, they have like uh, his own culture, mm-hmm. his own um, strength point, his weak points, okay? Uh, one team, they are famous of uh, social media. Another team is famous, is they are strong at the events. Another team, uh, they are strong at the relationship. Mm-hmm. Another team, they are strong at the um, attitude, hardworking, ev- every team. And actually, uh, really, I think it's, uh, it's about the team leader. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, the team leader is the guy who is responsible for Im- uh, to implement the culture inside the team. And um, would you say like all the teams get along with each other or is it like, okay, one team leader would never work with the other team leader? Actually, we are working all together, okay? Mm-hmm. They are doing, uh, we have like a, a, a training called uh, a K-meeting, okay? It's uh, it's happening every week, okay? So each team is doing his K-meeting alone, mm-hmm. okay? But uh, we have an event online uh, at the first day of each month. Mm-hmm all the teams come together and the inside you know the call inside the event if it's live okay there is no one will mention his team Mm -hmm. all will mention the umbrella okay uh you know and um all working together and it's a very normal and after finish okay each one going to his team and do his job Mm -hmm. so if people want to be part of the organization um so they can have their own team and specific circumstances achievements and what do they get from the organization then like an official label that they are part of the organization they get support from you they can book you for calls or what are the benefits everything Mm -hmm. okay they have a recognition uh, from the organization they have support Uh, we are going to their events we are uh, working with them even i'm not talking Even if anyone wants me for a presentation with Prospect, I will support them, mm-hmm. okay? Full support, uh, like the full support for everything. Plan mm-hmm. meeting. We have a concept called plan meeting each week with each leader. Plan meeting and uh, uh, put the target together and plan of actions together and solve the problems together and be responsible for solving his problems and be uh, initiative with him all the time, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, full support because he is part of the, the the organization. What's what's your recommendation? Because I know many networkers are listening right now. They have still, let's say, small organizations. But sometimes you feel, even if you, if you have a hundred people or two hundred people, and you feel like one person has a lot of potential, but the person is not really working the way you want them to work. So would you give would you give them free room to kind of create their culture already, or? Yeah, I, I, I'm going to tell you, okay? Because um, some people, they want to feel that, because they deserve, really, because they are good. They want, they want, they want to, to feel something like, uh, I'm different. I'm uh, exceptional, okay? Mm-hmm. So why not, for example, for, for, for this case, it's my answer for this case. Why not to make something like, uh, I, I will launch a target for three months, And this target is not easy target, but anyone who will achieve this target will take the recognition of co-founder of the team, mm-hmm. for example. Okay, so a lot of people will uh, fight and compete uh, very strong to be at this situation, and the guy who deserves to be there, they will be there, and they will feel satisfied. Okay, I'm I'm not uh, normal. I'm exceptional. I'm not just a part of it. Yes, I'm, yes. I'm actually I'm, a co-founder. I'm, I'm, I'm a co-founder, okay? Yeah. And when it's gonna be bigger and bigger and bigger, okay, he can launch uh, his own team, but it's not good to have an organization and one guy split with his own team, okay? Mm-hmm. It should be like three teams, for example, and after that criteria for anyone mm-hmm. to go, yeah? 
Awesome. I mean, it works tremendously because uh, I'm, I was part of from your uh, at your events. We had uh, one huge event in uh, Cairo, yeah. and that was kind of fun. Let's let's talk a little <laughs> bit how that one happened. So we have definitely a few cultural differences, <laughs> specifically from uh, me being German and you being Egyptian. Let's start with the timing. Timing is something completely different. You guys work at night. Yes. Why? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we work at night because uh, uh, two reasons. The reason number one, okay, is a lot of people they are working network marketing side job, okay. So uh, he will finish his. But we're uh, not talking first, evening. Uh, we're talking midnight, like two a.m. in the morning. <laughs> meetings at four a.m. in the morning. Because maybe the culture. I'm not talking about all the Arabic countries and not all the Middle East, but in Egypt. I'm, I'm Egyptian, okay. Uh, now we are uh, uh, making this uh, interview like uh, 4 p.m. Okay, it's my first meeting for today. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's my first meeting, and I try to wake up early to come yeah. for you. Okay, but uh, um, when I sleep like 6 a 6 a.m., I'm sleeping early. That's mm -hmm. because I'm so tired. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, it's 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 a culture. Okay, mm -hmm. because in my country there's no one sleeping. The 100 uh, million uh, citizens. Okay, population is a lot of people living in the same country. So they have like rotating shifts. You know, okay. <laughs> some people sleep and some people work at night. I'm uh, the night shift. <laughs> but you also told me once it's almost impossible meeting someone during the day, specifically in Cairo, because yeah. like traffic and very crowded. Uh, yeah. When we when we've been there for that event, we were in one hotel. I forgot the name. Yeah, it um, was uh, Inner Canal. Oh yeah, and it was like yeah. pretty much in the center, yeah, like yeah. very close to the stadium where the yeah. event took place. If we would have walked, it would be fifteen minutes. Ah, but yeah. we took the car and we needed like fifty minutes. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's 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 crazy. <laughs> you know, uh, Danny and Fire was uh, with me uh, in uh, Cairo. I was making stories. Uh, Every every second, okay, guys. It's my first time to see in my life 3 a.m. and the <laughs> traffic, traffic in yeah. the street. 2 a.m. Nobody can move <laughs> yeah. the cars. Yeah, but you know, uh, uh, sometimes we need uh, this uh, atmosphere mm -hmm. for network marketing. I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's always fun. It's always yeah. fun, specifically when you once called me at uh, I think it was like three thirty in the morning. Hey, I need help with some Spanish contact. Because, yeah, yeah. Because I'm fluent in Spanish, so it's like yeah, maybe for a more human time later on. <laughs> but it's just I mean, for you, it was perfect because even if it's midnight in Egypt, like as you just said, someone is always awake around the world. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like it's daytime somewhere else now. You know, when I travel to US, I have no uh, jet lag, nothing. <laughs> it's True. my normal time. <laughs> yeah, but the coolest thing was you originally planned that meeting uh, in in a convention hall, in a convention center. Yes. So, and then three days before, I, I, I can't remember the reason, maybe you can, can get into it, but suddenly you changed the venue. So if you would do that in any other country, it would never ever work. And I asked you, I said, bro, we have like 25,000 plus people expected. We don't have, but how you want to tell them that they don't have to move? Uh, I'm going to tell you. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to tell you. It's, no, it's, it gets interesting. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> you know, it's about the, the, the leadership. Okay. We have an aggressive uh, uh, leadership. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, leadership is about in our organization is shut up, listen, and do. Okay, mm -hmm. and everyone. I think is, strong uh, is the better word than aggressive. Aggressive sounds a little bit. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, strong leadership. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. it's 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 a strong leadership, but actually it it worth it. Okay, you know we have a concept in our uh, leadership. Okay, for example, this is a new leader. Okay, mm -hmm. I come to this new leader and ask him. I will ask him two questions. Question number one. Uh, or I will give him two choices, okay? Choice number one, do you want to be my Zoom A or Zoom B, okay? And he will say, okay, what's Zoom A and Zoom B? Okay, Zoom A is you can, uh, I will teach you how to work it. Mm -hmm. I will be aggressive with you. I will be tough sometimes. You will uh, take uh, my words and implement that. Shut up, listen, and do and you will be a full empty cup, but I'm responsible for your results, mm -hmm. okay? 
and the other choice okay i will give you the liberal leadership okay you can do what you want to do i'm gonna advise you mm-hmm. i will give you my advices if you want me anytime i'm gonna be with you and i will support you when you need me by your way my way it will be just an advice okay but your results is your responsibility okay mm-hmm. so what do you want to do what do you want to be zone a or zone b okay if he has enough commitment he will say i will be zone a mm-hmm. if he took the decision to be zone a he decided <laughs> 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 if, he, if he took the decision to be zone b it's it's his decision actually mm-hmm. okay so i'm talking about the zone a leaders okay mm-hmm. uh the the info is going in our team like very fast mm-hmm. okay we have a strong communication system uh level one they have group everything everyone he has group for his level one and level one uh, group of level one and each one finally reach the the new blood inside mm-hmm. the organization so it it's very easy and uh, our people are committed also for the facebook page and the instagram page and already we announced that and it's normal because you know the the attendance it's exceeded the whole yeah. so it was something positive for people to a, a positive reason i mean know? they came late anyways because they're egyptian so it yeah. didn't matter <laughs> like they came for but but the funniest thing ever was you sitting at the um you prepared like a little vip area like yeah. uh, for everybody who attended because you had Uh, a lot of celebrities coming, uh, yeah. professional football players, singers, um, actors, like very famous people joined, yeah. which was amazing for the industry. And um, then uh, we had that very nervous guy uh, who was the uh, president of uh, the company who was like, okay, what about the agenda? What about the agenda? And you're like, oh, yeah, no worries, no worries. And then I see you drawing the agenda <laughs> during the event, <laughs> putting everything together. And I was like, uh, where's he? how can you do the agenda now? And uh, you said, I don't know when people are coming, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> because everybody is kind of late and comes at their own timing. And some people were like two hours late, <laughs> you know, especially in, in, in the big events. You are talking about a 30,000 people or more than 25,000 people inside the one arena. You know, some people, they are uh, swabbing. Okay, some people come and yeah. uh, finish and go. And another, they are coming, you know, for these big events. And in Egypt, and in the crowd, and in the 100 million population, and with the culture of coming late is normal. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's not easy to do it. But we have an in-service team. Mm-hmm. Okay, in-service team, uh, it's uh, great. We have the concept of in-service. You know, the in-service, uh, they are some leaders, all not zone A, they are zone A plus, they are zone triple A, okay? okay. And they serve the events. Mm-hmm. They are not uh, security, they are the big leaders, the top leaders, the top earners in mm-hmm. my organization. Already they are organizing the event, mm-hmm. okay? And they are leading by example, uh, they have the great humility. Uh, they are uh, sleeping in the stadium for like three, four days to uh, prepare everything and prepare the event and finally see what they did uh, from effort inside the event and feel like so proud of mm-hmm. what they did. I had that uh, conversation with another leader uh, from from another Arab country actually and uh, he also works with the same concept. Yeah. I think he has even the same background like you have like yes, from, from years sure, back. Sure. And um, what I love about that in-service idea You just mentioned it, they're all leaders. Like there are no people who just recently started. They're all leaders who make a lot of money, who are in the six-figure range mostly, but yeah. you have to qualify to be able to serve. I love that idea. Yes, yes, sure. Mm. Because in our culture, uh, leadership is about serving. It's not a recognition. Mm-hmm. It's a serving, okay? And if you serve people more, uh, you deserve more and you will be respected more and more and more. Mm. So when somebody wants to find you, where can people reach out to you? Like, uh, what's the best way to reach out? Like Facebook, Instagram? Yeah, WhatsApp, Facebook, and Instagram. Uh, you, are, you are talking about... Yeah, like uh, you, you personally, yeah. Yeah, um, Instagram, Facebook, uh, WhatsApp. Mm. Uh, yeah, I don't have Twitter. I don't have. 
and low LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna. Uh, well, what's what's your Instagram name and Facebook name? Uh, doctor in my Instagram name, Doctor Dot Islam Dot Wasfi. Okay, we're gonna post that underneath uh, uh, the video and also in the show notes yeah, if you're just yeah. listening. Um, my Facebook is Islam Wasfi. I S L A M Wasfi. Okay. So W A S F Y. Yes. Exactly. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. And we're gonna put your uh, your contact um, information definitely uh, like somewhere. Just uh, feel free, dear listener, to to look around. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was a great conversation uh, with a lot of uh, golden nuggets. I mean, we could talk for hours, and we for sure will have you back I on love the show to for, w- with you, uh, yeah. Fabian. By the way, and. Yeah. Um, The last word always belongs to the guest. So if you have some inspirational words, motivational words for, I don't know, like all uh, networkers around the world or maybe for uh, people in the Middle East, feel free. Here's your time for your message. Uh, Look, uh, when I uh, worked in network marketing, I was searching always for the great people inside my team, okay? Because one guy, one day told me, okay, Islam, you will work. And dig and dig and dig and dig and dig, and you will find the gold in this uh, in this uh, uh, line, and and the other line dig and dig and dig and dig, and you will find the gold, and uh, you will find two great guys. They will be the best leaders ever. So you will uh, not work very hard, and you don't have to make a great effort in network marketing. Okay, mm-hmm. that's what he told me. Maybe that's what I I, I think. <laughs> okay, that's what I understood. Okay, I started to to search for those uh, two great uh, people. Like one week, one month, one year, I didn't find them. Okay, I think this guy he lied to me <laughs> or what? Or this business is not like that. But actually, it started to dig and dig and dig and dig and dig, and I didn't find them. Okay, I didn't find someone. Uh, uh, to be duplicated for me inside my team until I realized why because really I was searching outside of myself I was searching for people but I understood that network marketing people join people and people doing what we do not what we say people uh, if and if I want to lead I should lead by example because I find a lot of leaders Everywhere, they want to uh, uh, lead their teams by words. But mm. actually, I do believe our people are listening with uh, their eyes, not their ears. I do believe, you know, uh, of the idea, if I want to uh, if I wanna uh, uh, have a great people, I should be the greatest applying. If I, I, I need hard workers uh, inside my team, I should be the super hard worker. I should show them how hard working I am. You know, the idea of, of duplication in, in network marketing, without duplication, network marketing is nothing. It's like mm. sales. It's like uh, normal marketing. But Duplication is the best idea in network marketing and duplication is coming from the attitude and doing the great work, not the great words, okay? So my advice to everyone, um, if you want to lead, lead by example, do great effort and always think it's all about me. It's not about uh, really the company. It's not about the team. It's not about the uplines. It's not about anything. It's about me. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if I realize that I'm not a, a, a passenger on the chip, I'm a captain of my chip, everything will be great in network marketing. That's there were a lot of uh, amazing nuggets. That was uh, great <laughs> to wrap you. it up. So um, just let me uh, get like three snippets I took out of it. Number one, uh, listen with your eye- eyes and not with your ears. Or people listen with their eyes, not their ears. So they watch you. The second thing was... Um, uh, you are not a passenger, you're the captain of the boat. And the third one was um, uh, they watch what you work and they don't watch your words. Exactly. Uh, which is kind of all leading to the same thing. You have your destiny in your hand. Exactly. So thank you very much for your time. Thank uh, you, Fabian. <laughs> looking forward uh, for another interview in the future and uh, yeah, for spending a lot of time with you here in Dubai since you're here for a few months. Yeah. Let's uh, definitely do some cool stuff and uh, thank you once again. My pleasure to be here with you. Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you got great value from today's video. If you want to become a full-time network marketer yourself, check out the link to my free courses in the description below. 
And if you're interested in more content about the industry or amazing interviews with million dollar earners, check out this video or this one. See you soon.